looking at the music industry, we're still, I'm still very much heavily involved in it, but I'm finding it a little bit fragmented, a little bit disorganized, a little bit needle in a haystack almost. Absolutely. Well, when I worked at Rap Pages, um, we would get about 600 records a year. And of those 600 records a year, 20 of them would be amazing. Now, there's about 60,000 records a year. And of those 60,000 records, about 2,000 of them are amazing, but you have a lot more to get through to find them. The percentage never actually changes, the volume changes. And what we have now in the music industry is a proliferation of niche casting. So let's say, for example, you're Todrick Hall. Todrick Hall is sending records to a very specific demographic, a very small set of people, and he is serving that audience with incredible gusto. Todrick Hall is never gonna get Kiss FM, He's never going to be played by Ryan Seacrest. He knows that. He accepts that. That's part of his business model. Um, this niche casting has allowed audiences that were underserved in certain ways to be seen. Um, there is, uh, but it also changes the way that music is perceived. My kids, for example, don't own any music. They stream everything from Tidal, um, which drives me crazy because I'm paying for it, but whatever. Uh, whereas I, <laughs> I have 30,000 MP3s and before yeah. I cleared out my, before I cleared out my storage, uh, which broke my heart, I had 20 crates of vinyl, 15 crates of CDs. I mean, and this was all stuff that I had collected because it was a part of music enjoyment, this collection thing. Collection is a thing of the past. Things are a thing of the past because the decentralization of economies, because of the way that uh, people's spaces in many ways shrinking in urban environments that these are not choices that are, are, are popular anymore. This is not a bad thing. It's just a thing because if I don't, you know, if I don't go through the Beatles, I can't get to Saint Motel. If I can't go through Jimi Hendrix, I can't get to Lenny Kravitz. There are a number of evolutionary steps that lead us to where we are. And for me, it's really, uh, I always tell people, if you ever find a day when there's no new music I like, you should probably kill me because something's gone wrong. There's always something new, something interesting. I, I was just saying, I just discovered these two acts, Roosevelt and St. Motel, that I've been playing nonstop and driving my family crazy with them. <laughs> um, and, you know, they're, they're, they're completely new to me. Uh, uh, St. Motel just put out a new uh, half of their EP called the Original Motion Picture Soundtrack. And they're doing things that are not necessarily 100% new, but they're new to me and they're new interpretations. Like jazz has, uh, you'll see a thousand different versions of In a Sentimental Mood or, or Night in Tunisia because it's the variations that make it interesting. It's the joy and repetition, as Prince himself said on a record, uh, that, that makes it interesting. So from the standard of me looking at it, there's, um, Every, there, there's a lane for everybody. I used, I used to actually say, there's a Wu-Tang member for everybody. everybody you're not going to like everybody. You're not going to like, if you're not into Raekwon, if you're not into Inspector Deck, you're probably going to go for Genius. You know, there's, there's a lane for everyone, but there's so much more noise outside of that lane that sometimes mm -hmm. settling into it for a listener and for a fan in particular, given that even though there's more stuff, there's still the same number of hours in a day. 